Let's now go through a couple of examples to see how we can navigate the Smith chart to find the input impedance of any combination of a series elements and shunt circuit elements. So as a first example, my, let's start with a load impedance equal to 50 plus J100 and call that ZA or the equivalent admittance YA and then add to add in shunt a impedance equal to J30 and I'm going to call that impedance ZB or the equivalent admittance YB and my goal will be to find the input impedance Z in. So the first step to uh, is to plot the load impedance on the Smith chart and I have to normalize it first so my normalized impedance is 1 plus J2 to plot it on the Smith chart, I have to find the intersection of R equals 1 with X equals 2. Okay, we know how to do that. So there's my X equals plus 2 circle, and there's my R equals 1 circle, and here's the intersection. And this is my impedance ZA on the Z chart and this is gamma A. So to add a shunt impedance or a shunt admittance to it, I should first find the corresponding YA by transitioning ZA on the Z chart to YA on the Y chart. And I do that by rotating the vector gamma A 180 degrees and my resulting point is YA and I can read off the, the admittance right off the Y chart by finding the closest intersection of the G circle with the B circle and that intersection is right around 0.2 minus J.4 okay so let me write that down I plotted ZA on the Z chart, then I rotated gamma A 180 degrees to find YA on the Y chart, and I found YA to be equal to 0.2 minus J.4. Okay, now I'm going to find YB from ZB, and the normalized ZB is 0.6. Okay, so I can either I can do that just mathematically by taking the inverse of 0.6, but I can just to uh, get some more practice um, on the on the Smith chart. I'm going to do that using a Smith chart operation. So here's my uh, J.6 point, which is the which is ZB, and to find YB, I go. I move from the Z chart to the Y chart by rotating gamma B 180 degrees. And then I can read off the Y chart, the resulting YB point. And that looks to be right around minus 1.65 J. Okay, the next step is to add YA to YB. And I know that the real part is going to stay the same, 0.2, and the imaginary parts are going to add together to give me minus 2.05J. So now on the Smith chart, I'm going to stay on a constant G circle, my G equals to 0.2 circle, and I'm going to move by minus 1.65 J to end up at Y in. Okay, so there's my Y in point, and I can get the exact value of that particular admittance by reading it off the Y chart. But I actually know just from the math that that point is 0 0.2 <coughs> minus 
minus 2.05j. <clears throat> Okay, so the last step is just to find z in from y in. So I rotate gamma y in by 180, and there is my z in. So I'm back now on the z chart, and I can find or read off the, the value of z in directly from the z chart. And I'm going to say that the imaginary part, the x circle, is 0.48j, and then the r circle closest to z in is that circle there, and that looks to be right around 0 0.05. So to find zb from ZA, I rotated gamma A by 180 degrees, and similarly, um, I found Z in from Y in by rotating gamma Y in by 180 degrees. So I'm always using that rotation to go from the Z chart to the Y chart and, y and vice versa. Okay, so I'm just going to write y, what we found for y b and what we found for y in. And finally, what we found for z in. And of course, to find the final impedance I have to multiply the normalized impedance little z in by 50 ohms. Okay, now let's do another example. This time we'll make the example a little bit more complicated. Okay, say that our the load impedance this time is equal to 20 plus J30. And I'm going to call that impedance ZA. And in series with the impedance, I'm going to put a transmission line section with a characteristic impedance Z0. And the length of this transmission line section will be 0.35 lambda. Okay, looking into the circuit right after the transmission line. I'm going to see an impedance ZB or the corresponding admittance YB. Now here I'm going to do something interesting, which is insert a stub in, in parallel with a transmission line, an open-ended stub, okay, with, so this stub is also a transmission line with a characteristic impedance Z0, and it will have a length equal to 0.2 lambda, And looking into the stub, I will say that I, I see an impedance or admittance Ys and the corresponding impedance Zs. So what I'm going to try to find is Z in or Y in, which is going to be the impedance looking into the RF circuit right after the shunt open-ended stub. Okay, so as before, I'm going to plot my load on the Smith chart, Smith chart by first normalizing it um, by 50 ohms. 
Okay, so I end up with 0.4 plus j.6. And to find that on the Smith chart, I need to find where I need to find the point where r equals 0.4 intersects x equals plus 0.6. That's this point right there. So that is z a on the z chart, and here's my gamma a vector. Now I need to find ZB by moving on the transmission line by 0.35 lambda. So in order to do that, I will first note my starting point. And in terms of lambda, that point is 0 0.095 lambda. and I move on the Smith chart, I, I need to move by 0.35 lambda, and I'm going to move, be moving clockwise because I'm moving away from the load and towards the generator. And that sum comes to 0.445 lambda. So I need to move by, by a delta of 0.35 lambda. And I know that halfway around the Smith chart is 0.25 lambda. So I need to go halfway around and then 0.1 lambda more to end up at 0.445 lambda. So let me just go ahead and, and, and find that angular 0.445 That's going to be right, right around there. So I'm going to draw a dashed line now to the origin, along which I'm going to draw my gamma b um, vector. Okay, so the magnitude of the gamma vector has stayed the same, and I've just rotated it by let's say my my dash line is I'm going to just move my dash line there so that it corresponds to the actual vector that I drew okay so there's my zb point And to find this point, I rotated the gamma vector by 0.35 lambda. So I went halfway around the Smith chart and then 0.1 lambda more. Okay. So before I can add the shunt open-ended stub, since I'm gonna I'm going to be adding an impedance in shunt or an, an admittance in shunt. I should now map ZB from the Z chart to YB on the Y chart by rotating it by 180 degrees. So there is my YB. And I can read YB right off the Y chart. by finding where the, the closest intersection of the um, G circle with the B circle. And Y in is going to be the sum of Y B with the admittance of my open-ended stub Y S. Okay, so let, let me just note YB, and reading directly off the Y chart, I find that it is equal to 
or approximately equal to 1.4 plus J 1.5. Okay, let's zoom back in and work with finding the admittance of my stub. Okay, so to find the stub admittance, I start with the open-ended load, y equals zero. Since it's open, my admittance is equal to zero. So it's the leftmost point on the Smith chart. And then I'm going to move clockwise by the length of the stub which is equal to 0.2 lambda and I'm going to end up at an admittance that is equal to y s equals to plus point uh, plus 3.1 j okay so that's my y s and I have found my y b which is just the intersection of the G and the B circle. And now I can find the sum of YB and YS. And the real part is going to stay the same and the imaginary parts are going to add to plus 4.6J. So to find that on the Y chart, I stay on a constant G circle and go to plus 4.6 J to for that B circle okay so the B circle is the constant 4.6 J circle and that is my Y in okay so I just found the input admittance of my RF circuit and the final step is to find the corresponding impedance by mapping y in on the y chart to z in on the z chart and so I can find z in to be equal to that's approximately point zero seven there and the x is approximately negative point two so Z in is 0 0.07 minus 0.2J. Okay, so I've just answered the question of what is my input impedance. And I found that to be equal to 0 0.07 minus 0.2J. And to find my final impedance, I need to multiply the normalized impedance by 50 ohms. So I went from the Z chart to the Y chart and back to the Z chart to find my final input impedance.